Hello guys, welcome to Talking News. Please subscribe, hit that like button right now so you don't forget to also hit that notification bell so that you can get notifications whenever we have new uploads. So right now, I'm going ahead and putting this video out because we believe that Anaya Blanchard may have been found. But I want to go over a few things first. So who is Anaya Blanchard? So uh, coming out of Auburn, Alabama, she is a 19-year-old. Uh, a Homewood native and a student at Southern Union State Community College. On October 23rd, Anaya Blanchard was at a gas station in the area. She was dropping her brother off after a family get-together. Is what we're hearing. We're not positive on that, but that's what we were told. But also on October 30th, there was a rumor going around that there was a possibility that she might have been meeting somebody through an online app, which we believe is probably most likely not true, but we'll find out in the future. So, Anaya was at this gas station, and surveillance video picked her up inside the store where she made a purchase at this Chevron, where she later left. But, no one had seen her since. It wasn't until a while later that a witness that claimed that he was staying at this hotel said that he did, in fact, witness Anaya on October 23rd being forced into her own car by a man that he identified as Yazid. The witness says that he did not come forward earlier is... Well, the reason is this. When he returned back to his hotel, he told his wife slash girlfriend, which we're not certain which she is, and she told him to mind his own business. So as you can see here, the witness was not that far away from the Chevron where Anaya Blanchard was last seen uh, by surveillance camera and by witnesses. It was later on that this man actually come forward. We're not positive how he come forward. Uh, whether or not the police, you know, seen somebody was in the store and tracked them down, or if he come forward himself and said that he seen um, Yazid forcing Anaya into her car. So a day or two later, her car was located in some apartments 55 miles away from where she was um, in Montgomery. So here we go. I've got the date here. So it was Anaya's Honda 2017 CRV. And this was on October 25th. So yeah, two days later. It was damaged. And uh, there was also some remnants that kind of suggested that there was a very devastating injury. On October 28th, the Auburn Police Department released the video surveillance of Anaya Blanchard walking inside the Chevron gas station in Sel on South College Street. And so this is in Auburn. Just in case I haven't said it, that was the last time she was seen. So shortly after that, October 31st, a reward and information on, Anaya Bla on um, Anaya's whereabouts was um it actually rose to a hundred and five thousand dollars so much of this came from the ufc and that's where walt harris her stepfather which is a usc fighter um basically i guess he works there so but they suspected also at that point that there was probably foul play 
At this point, they ended up putting a picture of a suspect, which ended up being this young man, Yazid. This is, uh, he was, he's 29 years old, and he has been arrested 26 times, guys, which we'll go over in a little bit. They put his picture out, um, looking for him so that they could talk to him. And it wasn't long before they had a report that he was spotted at the Pine Forest exit in Pensacola, Florida. He ended up running into the wooded area in that, uh, by that exit where police were able to capture him and bring him um, while well, he ended up in an ambulance and going to the hospital before they took him to jail and actually had a chance to question him. So this is two weeks after she's been missing. This young guy was not afraid of anybody and he just act like he was the shit like nobody could touch him and when he walked into a courtroom each and every time he would make eye contact with somebody almost as if he's trying to send a threat at times that's what it seemed like to me so Yazid 26 prior arrests he was at the gas station also on October 23rd. They were able to confirm that through a witness. And when he uh, went to court, he was seen shaking his head in court and staring at people. And some say that he was shaking his head at Anaya Blanchard's um, parents. Shortly after, the police did come up with a new second suspect who was arrested and he goes by uh, Fisher Squishy and guys I will do a way more detailed video later on I'm just having to do this in a hurry so it's Antoine Fisher goes by Squishy now what I could tell Antoine is just a cook at the IHOP but I want to watch watch this guys this is Yazid coming into court check out that eye contact he makes he doesn't seem to have a care. It's almost as if he's sending a message and a threat. And a lot of people are kind of shocked as the way he acts. Like he is a big shot and he has nothing to fear. So one of our concerns too is the fact that the 26 arrests that he has. He's never been indicted. That's enough to make you go, hmm. Okay, so let me finish telling you about the second suspect. So, he was arrested um, Saturday, the 23rd of November, 2019, um, in Lee County District. So, he's 35 years old. He works at the IHOP. I know um, because he says that on Facebook. And he also has a family. So, he has children and a wife. So Antoine Squishy was um, arrested with kidnapping first degree. What we know right now is Fisher's from Montgomery and, well, <clears throat> sorry guys, he was arrested Friday night, but we found out Saturday. Guys, I didn't mean for this video to come out like this, but we had this new information. I want to get that out to you guys. So, like I mentioned before, a lot of people are saying they feel like there's something not right about this. Um, that there might be some corruption going on for the fact that this guy, Yazid, has had so many run-ins with some very serious crimes. Six of those crimes that I know right now at this moment, because that can change, were very serious crimes, yet he was still out running around. Okay, I finally found my notes that give you more details on the second suspect that they arrested, uh, Mr. Fisher, who was arrested on November 22nd, that was Friday, by the Auburn Police and members of the U.S. Marshals Task Force on a warrant charging him with kidnapping first degree. He was being held in Lee County Jail. Chief Register said, at this time, no additional information is available uh, per a court order um, gag order so what they're saying is they're not going to give us much information on what's going on with the gag order but we did find out later that um, 
it's going to actually be dropped pretty soon. I'll have to get that date for you later. Now again, like I said, Yazid arrested 26 times. Six of those were major cases. The shocking news about that is he was never, never, never indicted. Never convicted. Not once. Here we are. And we have a missing child, an innocent child, who we are hearing right now might have been found. And we're going to go ahead and start talking about that. And then I'll come back and tell you more of the details. Okay, so a sheriff's car blocks County Road 2 where the suspected remains of Anaya Blanchard are being investigated. And this is in Shorter, Alabama. This is today, November 25th of 2019. And authorities have a strong reason to believe that human remains found in um, Macoon County, I hope I said that right guys, are those of the missing Alabama team, Anaya Blanchard. This is horrible news because a lot of us were hoping, but I think we knew that was not going to be the case that we would find her alive and okay. I followed this story to make sure that people realize we're going to stick to this because I feel like something is not right. Why is this man out of jail in the first place? So anyways, um, I'm pretty certain. Well, we, I kind of knew that we would find out information because when they arrested that second suspect, I'm pretty certain they're going to make a, a plea deal with him. But that's speculation. And the only reason I say that is because they said they have a strong reason to believe that it is her. So at least, uh, most likely, Mr. Fisher is talking and cooperating with the police. And so that's a plus, especially for Miss Blanchard's family. Okay, so this is what I was able to find out for right now. So the Auburn police and other law enforcement responded to a wooded area in Shorter, Alabama, shortly before 11 a.m. So there we go. Uh, there's our time. So this is unfolded as I was doing this video, guys, uh, where they recovered the human remains several feet into the woods. So Central Alabama Crime Stopper said that in a release of the remains, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, in a release, the remains were found after investigators received information regarding the possible location of the remains. So, in this case. Guys, forgive me because I was dropping my daughter off. She was feeling better and then I come home and started this and then found out. Okay, so what they're thinking is, you know, these recoveries are believed to have been recovered um, between Montgomery County and this is where the car was discovered in Lee County where she was last seen so I'm very shocked that um, actually Ecky search were not the ones that found out but I am interested to know did they find how deep did they find her and did they have to take a car into there because I'm still wondering how that car got damaged like that or if they did that in order to just create a distraction. And of course, what a lot of people suspect is there might have been a struggle inside the car. So the end result in this, guys, is it's very devastating news for the Blanchard family and to our nation because it's just sad to see that we have this kind of low lives destroying lives of innocent people who are productive in their community and one thing that really bothers me is the fact that this guy Yazid feels that he's untouchable and why is that why is it he has 26 arrests six major cases and no indictments and no any kind of punishment for all these acts that he's accused of is it just coincidence that he's just around at every place that something devastating happens one thing was certain when you watched him walk into a courtroom he walked in there like he owned it so this concerns me and i want to ask you guys that live in that area who are keeping up the story 
get rid of your judges, get rid of your sheriffs, because something isn't right in that area. It's time to put some new blood in because you guys are dealing with some corruption that I don't even know where it starts or ends because I haven't had time to look into it. But I can tell you that Alabama, and especially in those areas, are probably ranked one of the number one um, states in this country for corruption. Not to mention y'all are dealing with these gangs that are getting out of control and for some reason, these guys think that um, getting somewhere in life is, you know, getting into these lower class groups. And to me, what it all boils down to is, uh, especially with gangs, is there are people that are struggling to get somewhere and they're just, they're seeking the wrong place to get the attention and love they're looking for. Now, this is not how I was going to do this Anaya Blanchard video whatsoever. I have spent four days putting it together to go a different way. Which I knew when they took that suspect in, the second suspect in, that we um, most likely would get some sort of answers. But I didn't realize, um, I guess I lost track of time, it would be this quick. And I am certainly glad that they're able to get this kind of closure. And hopefully they can take this man and stick him behind bars and he will never ever see the light of day because I don't think I've ever disliked somebody as much as I dislike Yazid. And I have to say it does seem like Fisher is cooperating so that's another plus. So I'm glad he's able to do that. Um... Because... I don't know it's confusing it's a confusing it's just like the Kelsey Barrett case where you had Crystal Lee um, and Patrick Frazee one of them had to go free and one of them you know had to face the consequences there's always the good and bad with these kind of deals but if um, they hadn't found that second suspect where would we be today of course, I want to remind you that's speculation on my half. We will find out in the future, you know, what happened to her, probably in a short future. And I believe that gag order will be lifted probably, I don't know, I'm thinking like within a week or two. I do realize that a lot of us are very angry about this and saddened at the same time because... There's no way to bring her back. There's nothing we can do to change this. We can only hope for, you know, justice this time. And we definitely, please guys, keep an eye on your leaders there. There's something going on there. It's not right. Now, I did want to talk about that witness that um, is going to be... I'm glad he come forward. It took a lot of bravery for him to do that especially with what they're dealing with right now and a, you know i'm trying not to use his name i know his name i just don't want to use it the defense wanted to expose the witness but prosecutors you know didn't and as far as the judge uh, ruled in that part of it he said he may or can remain he can expose himself or remain anonymous it's up to him so according to this article, they're saying that they found Anaya, uh, possible Anaya's remains at 10.45 a.m. this morning. So the, as always, when the stories come out at first, it's kind of hard to get them completely accurate. We're going to have to wait a little bit until we can confirm all that. But I'm certain it breaks my heart for Anaya's um, real father, Elijah. Blanchard because he really was hoping to find her um, alive and well. I know her mother was as well uh, and they were struggling with this gag order. They wanted to speak publicly but I'm, I have a feeling the reason why they shut them down was so that they could close in on that second suspect. Okay, so I do want to talk about what we did find out, some a little bit of new information when Yazid did um, 
go to his preliminary hearing and we heard that um, in the store video you can see Yazid purchase alcohol as Yazid is getting change he looks over his shoulder and is watching Anaya which is also in the store at the same time this is on October 23rd so according to them it appears that Yazid enters from the left then he exits to the right where they believe Anaya's car was at that time and this is based on you know what they know at the time so this is where things kind of conflict where i hear police kind of track down the witness that was seen in this surveillance uh um, the store surveillance and then we hear the witness come forward so i'm not certain how that happened right now so after the witness uh seen this all happen he uh, ended up going back to the hotel so I want to run this video for you right here. So after Ibrahim Yazid was, uh, his face was shown on, um, you know, media as a suspect or a person of interest, he ran for it. It looks like he went to Pensacola, Florida, where they were able to capture him, uh, where he was hiding in a wooded area there. And here you can see him being taken to the hospital by ambulance. So, yeah, and they're trying to cover his face and protect him. I was a little, I guess that's her job. So she didn't know probably about his story much. But it just makes me angry seeing this kind of care going to this monster. Why, Naya, we knew most likely she was out there alone by herself. Here's a news clip, guys. There and hid behind some bushes. Court documents revealing Blanchard's blood was found in her car, indicative of someone suffering a life-threatening injury. The 19-year-old was last seen October 23rd on this convenience store surveillance camera in Auburn, Alabama. Police say the man in custody also seen in the store at the same moment. The affidavit also says a witness identified Yazid as the individual forcing Blanchard into a vehicle against her will, then leaving with her in the vehicle. Two days later, Blanchard's abandoned SUV was found about 50 miles away in Montgomery. Her family determined to find her. We're searching. We're going to do. We're going to cover all areas, all aspects to be able to find you and where you are. We're going to try to find you and bring you home. Eleven agencies involved. Auburn police confirming they're questioning whether Yazid allegedly acted alone. But at this time, there are no additional suspects. This, to me, looks like what I would call a situational crime, a crime that he was looking to do this. He came upon her and decided to act. So what do we expect to happen now? So we wait for a medical examiner to examine what, you know, this... Uh, person that they found identify them find out the reason of why they're there and how it happens once they confirm that it's most likely it is Anaya um, they will then proceed to press more charges coming to Yazid so you can expect that he will be facing um, murder charges shortly after affirmation that this uh, information and examination all lines up correctly. It just makes me so angry that he was ever out on the streets in the first place. After all of the trouble he causes. And so this is all this stuff that you see Beyonce and all them celebrities out there fighting for freedom of criminals that don't, you know, to be free. You can thank them for this kind of thing. And the fact that they just don't have room to store a lot of them, especially in big cities. So definitely push for your cities to protect your children, guys. You, you pay these taxes. You are the guys out there working and you're the ones that are taking the losses from not being able to send a message out there that if you commit a crime, you will pay enough is enough we should no longer have to be afraid to let our children drive to a convenience store play at a park play at a birthday party in our own neighborhood i have go check out my stories guys every one of my stories will tell you that these are cases some of them 
where we can protect our people a lot better if we were just more aware of the reality so that we could send that message to our leaders and say, look, we are not going to tolerate our children being in danger any longer. Criminals need to be behind bars. And we need harsher, harsher punishment. And let me tell you guys, if you're one of the people, if you watch my videos and you are a supporter of, you know, especially for a serial uh, murderer, that you would want to protect his life, this probably isn't a channel for you. I am definitely a supporter of harsh punishment. So a lot of people are trying to figure out whether or not uh, this second suspect that they arrested was in the car at the time that Anaya was abducted. I'm trying to figure out how in the world he got her in the car in the first place. Did he hurt her before or after? If he was by himself, it makes sense that he might have did something to her in order to weaken her. But also... Uh, it could be that he had somebody in the car get in her, her car and that's why he was watching her so hard is, you know, maybe they premeditated this just minutes before it happened. They're saying it's not premeditated, um, but we haven't heard much since uh, the second suspect, suspect was arrested. I'm thinking there's a chance that we can have a big change on this story. And this guy, the second suspect, I, I've seen his Facebook. Let me share a few things with you. So a brief description of the second suspect. He married his wife, 2006. Had his first baby, December 18, 2003. Now get this, guys. Check this out. So I'll, I'll have to do another video to get all this for you, but... Look at this date, guys. You notice that face. February 14th at 7.40 p.m. Man found beaten near to death after deputies. I don't have the story, but you get the, the picture here. This is his buddy here. He posted on his Facebook. So is this a trophy? What's going on here? So I'm guessing this is for the last charge Yazid had. Uh, where he had kidnapping and um, he almost nearly beat that guy to death. So Fisher had this on his Facebook page. So it's kind of like a trophy or kind of a warning, if you will. So I think you'll find out later on that a lot of them post these things on their Facebook as a way to say, hey, it's me without saying it's me. Now, guys, I'm going to try to redo this video again. I had it set up exactly perfect the way that I wanted to tell the story. And then I, we got this new information, which happens a lot. And you have to just th scrap everything you just put hours into. But um, definitely, I want to send out our blessings out to the Blanchard family. I know right now that their heart feels like mush right now. They're probably a complete mess emotionally. The fact that the second suspect had children that he dearly loved. He appeared to love his family very deeply. As far as Yazid, I never had time to do a lot of background. I do know he comes from a Muslim Brotherhood type thing, um, which is the darker one. He's also very close to his mother. And but Yazid's this mother Fisher has guy, I think he is times. the initial... Uh, key to unlock the door to Anaya Blanchard's story. And I'm very thankful that this family was able to get this because a lot of times we can't even get those type of answers. Definitely want to give a shout out to the uh, investigators and everybody that's involved with this case. They're doing an excellent job. But again, I want to send um, also a red flag. So keep your eye 
on the political leaders in that area, guys, you might want to place them all because this guy has been in, you know, Yazid 26 times, six major cases, and he was out running free. Something's not right about that. You need to find out who all was involved with that case, and I think we need to take further steps to investigate as to why uh, this is happening. And uh, hopefully I can cover that in the next video coming up. I want to make sure the Blanchers know that we're here for you. We got your back, and we will help you out to keep this in the light. Most stories, once they find, uh, find them, I move on. But this story, I'm going to be investigating as to why Yazid was not behind bars beforehand. And um, guys, raise awareness. Spread this video everywhere. And like I said, guys, I apologize. I don't have everything together perfectly this round like I want it to. Uh, but I'll try to get that fixed here shortly. Now, we got Thanksgiving coming up. I want to say happy Thanksgiving to those of you um, that are doing well out there. And I just feel bad for this family having to go through this um, on Thanksgiving. That is definitely heartbreaking. God bless, guys. Love you guys. Thanks for watching and thanks for caring. See you guys soon.